Chapter 1D. There's a reality of things, i.e. the amount of cover people have and the ideal world where everyone has sufficient level of cover for their needs. To find out how well the insurance industry is doing, they've calculated the gap between the ideal and the real and estimated it to be around 2.4 trillion pounds. The gap on income protection alone is 200 billion pounds a year. That means there is 200 billion pounds of income protection insurance that is not bought every year that needs to, to make sure that everyone that is working is sufficiently covering the likelihoods of something happening to them and not being able to get any income. When you add this grim reality to the fact that a lot of people are in a difficult economic situation, now even more than ever thanks COVID, we found that insurance is failing short of protecting people in new displays of emerging risk. Hold on, what do I mean here? Let's take an example. There is a vast swathe of people who rent rather than buy. And we all know that when you buy your house, you insure it properly. You look after the mortgage, also the payments of the mortgage. However, when you rent, how many of us think about insuring against the likelihood of not being able to meet their rental obligations? And when you add a massive group of people that rent and are not protected at the same time, that creates a systemic risk that needs looking after. But it's not political priority at the moment so nobody ever discusses that. Having said all of that, what factors affect people's willingness to cover themselves? This is for us to understand what happens behind people's minds. The first and foremost element is price. The science is clear on this one. The lower the cost, the higher the sums insured. Second is the housing market. As surprising as it may sound, the housing market is an important one in the UK. In fact, buying a house is the biggest expenditure for most people. And unsurprisingly, mortgage holders are some of the biggest buyer of protection cover as we said. That is because they understand the consequences of a mortgage falling on their partner or their little ones. Renters? Not so much. So the more people own their home, the higher the demand is for various protection covers. The third and last one is economic factors. First one is income. The more money you have, the more you will want to protect it and the more you will be able to afford to do so. It makes sense, doesn't it? Then we have inflation, which is the second and last economic factor. Many studies, most notably the one done by the World Bank in 2003, found that there's a correlation between the increase in interest rates and the decrease in the total sums assured. They found specifically that if interest rates increased 1%, there was a total decrease of 1.4% of the total sums that are insured in the markets. This is due to the fact that people lose faith in the ability that the future sums they will receive as a payment will be able to cover their needs at the time when they need them. This is because as we know, inflation heavily eats at the purchasing power of money. Focus point. One can be tempted to shout at the screen in protest at the lack of education as a factor that affects protection cover. Surely, if you know more, you understand the risks and therefore you protect yourself adequately, right? Well, research after research finds that education, life expectancy and the number of dependents that you have bear little to no impact on protection cover.